If some Windows functions aren't working, Windows is crashing, or there are unexplained performance issues, the cause may be that the core system files are corrupted. The Deployment Imaging Service and Management tool, along with the System File Checker, are two tools that can be used to scan Windows and repair the operating system. However, the first and most crucial step is to make sure it is not your hard drive that is causing the issue. I have seen more failing hard drives cause Windows crashes than any other issue with Windows actually being corrupted. So to check your hard drive, you need to run a command prompt as an administrator. To do that, click on Start and just type in CMD. When you see Command Prompt pop up in the menu here, right-click on it and go Run as Administrator. Once that's up on your screen, the command that you want to type is check disk, C colon, or if you have a different boot uh, drive other than C, type that drive letter, but typically it will be C, forward slash R space forward slash F. Hit Enter. You're going to be prompted that the file system is currently locked because it's in use. Just select yes to run it when you restart your system. And right away, what you want to do is reboot your system. So we'll reboot it at this point. Okay, there we can see that check disk is now underway. We won't interrupt it and whatever you do, do not reboot your computer while it's running. Let it run to completion and fix any errors that it might find on your computer. Step one has run. Your hard drive has been checked for errors and replaced if necessary. Step two is to actually check Windows now for errors. Typically, you would run SFC slash scan now, which is the repair utility. But what happens if the deployment image itself is corrupt? That way, SFC is not going to give you the results that you expect. So before you run SFC, I recommend checking that the deployment image is actually in good standing. So how do we do this? Again, Click on the Start menu, type CMD, and when you see Command Prompt pop up, right-click on it and go Run as Administrator. The command that you want to type in here is DISM space forward slash online space forward slash cleanup dash image space forward slash check health. Hit Enter. And it's a very quick process. This one is just a basic scan to see if there's any images or any issues with the image. I generally do the next level, which is one step up from that. Instead of check health, it's scan health. This does a more advanced scan of the image to make sure that it's okay. This step does take a little bit longer, so just let it run to completion. You can see on this particular system, there are no issues with the online image. But what happens if there was? So we'll deal with that now. Let's have a look. What you'd want to do is the same command, but instead of scan health at the end, we are now going to restore the health. And this process does take quite a bit of time as well. So do be patient and let it run through its procedure. And once done, we'll continue. Okay, as you can see from my system, there are no errors. But what happens when you run the restore health and you get errors then? Well, what you actually need to do at this point is you would need to get an image of Windows, 7, of Windows 10 and then rebuild your online image. And to do that, it's quite easy. You open up your web browser and just do a quick search for Microsoft Media Creation Tool. Once that loads up, make sure whatever you do, you are actually going to the Microsoft.com website. Be very careful that you're not getting some third-party hacked version that could potentially corrupt your computer. So once you're on this website, what you want to do is scroll down until you see Create Windows 10 Installation Media. Download the tool, and it will download the media creation tool. In this case, it's 20H2 because that's the current version of Windows 10. Save the file. And it should be saved into your downloads folder. So we'll go into that folder. And then we have the media creation tool. Double click on it to run it. Alrighty, once this screen is up, we'll click on accept. Now here's the important screen that I wanted to show you. Do not click on upgrade this PC now, but instead check off the second option that says create installation media for another PC. Click on next. Just accept the defaults on the following screen and click on Next again. And here's the other screen that you got to double check. 
make sure you save it as an ISO file because with Windows 10, you can actually mount the ISO file quite easily, which in our next step, we're going to need to do. So you click on ISO file, click on next. You wanna save it. Typically it'll save into your downloads folder. So we'll click on save. Now give it a while because it is a fairly large file. It's just over four gigabytes in size. So it, it is a lengthy download. Okay, the download is done. So let's go into our downloads folder. And you can see I've renamed the file to the specific Windows 10 versions, underscore V20H2. I have a lot of different image files, so I like to keep them organized by putting the actual version behind it. So we don't need the Media Creation Toolkit anymore, so we'll delete that. And what we want to do here, now remember, at this point, we are going to fix our online image so that System File Checker will run and properly repair our system. So in this case, we're going to right-click on the ISO file and we're going to mount it. As you can see, it mounted to drive E. So we'll close this screen down. Once again, we need that administrative command prompt. So click on start, CMD, right click on it, run as administrator. Alrighty, now this time, the, the command that we're going to type is a little bit more lengthy. So we're going to run DISM forward slash online, forward slash cleanup image, forward slash restore health, and forward slash source colon. And here where we, I have an X on this screen, you need to change it to the drive that you mounted your image to. In this case, we're going to, to drive E. Now, version 10, I think roughly around version 1809, they changed the WMI file to an ESD file. So this, this should be the right command, install.esd. But if it's not, certainly check the source location on drive E and see if it's the WMI file, in which case simply change that part of it. Limit access. I've got an extra characters at the end there. Now, this process will take a bit of time as well, because what we're going to do is we're going to repair that image to make sure it's fully functioning. So once again, we'll let this run to completion. The image has finally been repaired, so now we can get to repairing the operating system. The command that you want to type at this point is sfc forward slash scan now. And there is a double N in the middle there. So once you hit enter, it will run a complete system scan and repair any files as necessary. Just bear in mind, this process will take a fair bit of time. So let it run to completion. Once SFC has run, this is what you really hope to see that no, there are no integrity violations. If there are, it'll be on this screen and it will show you a particular error. So usually, once it finds an error, it'll tell you to read the log files, the cbs.log file. To make that really easy for you to read, I have a command here that you can type in. And it's basically looking for a specific string within that log file, and it's going to export it to a text file on your desktop. The reason why you want to do this is because honestly, trying to go through that cbs.log file, even being a computer technician, I still find it hard to try and figure out what on earth is going on in there. So this particular command that I've put up on the screen here, I'll link it at the bottom as well. This will create the text file on the desktop. As you can see, I just created sfcdetails.txt, or you can call it whatever you want. That's just the end of the command here is where you determine that. If we double click on this file to open it up, you can browse through it and anywhere where it finds an error. Like earlier, I did run it and I had a particular error. And it told me that the defrag link was actually corrupt and it repaired it. Keep scrolling through this list and any issue that you have, you should see the date and time on the left-hand side here. And it'll give you the particular file that may be corrupt. So you might have to replace it manually. Generally, it'll try and repair it on its own and you'll be back up and running without any issues like mine did earlier this week. So close this screen down once you're done. If your Windows was loading and this has fixed it, your process is done. But there is still another scenario that I've run into. So I'll just close this down for now and delete this text file because we no longer need it. What happens when your computer won't even boot up? In that case, all of the previous steps become somewhat mute. So what you'll need in this instance, you would need a USB stick with Windows 10 loaded onto it so you can boot up your computer. Boot it up into Windows 10 and run the repair option. And we'll have a look at what to do from that point on. Okay, so now we're gonna deal with the scenario where Windows doesn't actually load and we still need to run an SFC slash scan now. So we've booted up with a USB version of Windows 10 
And what we're going to do is we're going to troubleshoot. So click on troubleshoot on this screen, go into advanced options, and we want to actually run the command prompt. So we'll click on command prompt. It'll prompt you for the user account and password that you're using. We'll continue. And here we have an administrative command prompt after booting up with Windows 10 CD or Windows 10 USB drive. The biggest issue here is a lot of people have the next command wrong. So first thing, what I'm going to show you is a command you need to type called bcd edit, just on its own and hit enter. What we're looking for, you'll see there's two sections here. There's a Windows boot manager and there's a Windows boot loader. The boot loader is the area that we're most concerned with because that's going to determine the parameters that we specify in our next command. So when we're actually running SFC in a boot mode like we are in right now. So the command that you want to type is the following. SFC space forward slash scan now space forward slash OFF boot dir for boot directory. And this is where you specify your actual drive. So if you have a look from the BCD edit screen, our boot drive is actually drive C in this case. In some computers, it's going to be drive D, possibly drive E. It all depends on the drive and who set it up and what recovery partitions have been created on that particular drive. So please don't skip this step, otherwise you may not put it into the right drive. So in this case, we're gonna go C colon backslash. Then we're gonna go another space, forward slash, OFF winder equals, and again, it's going to be the same drive letter as your actual bootloader drive. So in this case, it's C colon backslash windows. Hit enter. And this is where we'll do the actual SFC slash scan now, but without actually loading up the operating system. Most of the time, this will fix a lot of the issues with Windows not actually booting up. Again, do keep in mind that your hard drive would have needed to be checked with check disk to make sure it's not actually the hard drive that is causing it to not boot up. We'll let this run to completion and I'll show you what it does once it's done. Alrighty, now that the SFC slash scan now process has completed, and again on my system it didn't find any integrity violations, but in yours it might, it should typically fix them. And at this point we can just type exit to close out of that. And if you need to do other things with the repair console, such as uninstalling particular updates or rolling back your system to a saved image, you certainly can, or if you want to turn off your computer. But typically speaking, once I've completed that particular step, I usually like to boot my computer and continue into Windows 10, which we'll do at this point. So hopefully between all these different steps here, it would have provided you with some information on repairing your systems and you'll be back up and running without any further issues. If you are, by all means, please do give us a thumbs up in the box below. Take care and have yourselves a fantastic day. Thanks so much. Bye now.